Going to the game, I'm going to be playing Nautilus Jungle and show you how easy and broken this champion is at the same time. In this matchup, we're currently up against Xin Zhao and in a Nautilus versus Xin Zhao, this is an easy advantage for Nautilus since he can do everything that Xin Zhao does but better. He has faster clearing, stronger ganks, more CC, and even more durable. The only thing Xin Zhao can possibly do is have higher damage output and possibly snowball the game from getting good early ganks. But if this is an even game, then Nautilus will obviously have the advantage in the matchup. The clear that I'm doing is a bot side clear into a full clear since I'd like to pass towards the top lane and help Fiora get a lead over the Jax. Bot lane is another lane that I could possibly go for but in this game, you always want to go for the easiest lane to gank which is the Baron lane. Nautilus clear is really fast, unexpectedly fast. He can full clear before the 2 minute mark which is perfect because once you have your ultimate then your ganks will be way easier. His duels are also unsuspectingly strong especially with the aftershock plus second skill dealing so much damage and this gives him strong dual potential as well. As you can see Xin Zhao just finished Raptors while I'm already running towards the wolves. Here I went for third skill because I wanna maximize my clear speed and get level 5 as soon as possible. If there's a possible level 3 gank that you can do, you could also go for the Q. But in this case, I went for the third skill. Unfortunately, it would've been better if I went for the hook so I could go for a counter gank but with me showing up and Xin Zhao failing the gank, I should have this cuddle pretty easily especially since I have priority over the lanes. Now that we clear this, we go back to our blue and Gromp, and then once we reach level 5, we always want to look for a gank. 159 or rather 149, we're already at the Gromp. This could have been faster if the scuttle wasn't contested but overall really fast clear and we have so much damage with our kit once we have our ulti. And speaking of which, perfect timing seeing that Jax is 1 HP. He's definitely dead with just one cast of our ulti even though he flashes. We just need to combine it properly and here we go for an R flash so that our ulti met travels faster and we immediately get the burst. Fiora gets the first blood plus we deny Jax creeps and even get plates which is perfect for us. They try to go for a gank mid but Karma does a good job of escaping it so overall it's a 1 for 0 exchange. After going back we go for a Rod of Ages giving us more HP mana and AP which will increase our overall durability and damage at the same time. With our bot camps up and another thing about Nautilus is that his ultimate has a really fast cooldown so after using a topside we already have it again and can possibly use it for a counter gank bot. If they went for an engage I could have caught I thought bubble hit someone. A bit of a misplay but it's fine. We force the Xin Zhao flash use the ultimate on Danila even though she's able to escape, we get them pretty low and they're not able to get any gank off. Overall, I think it's a win for us since we're able to burn their spells. This is okay because our ultimate will be up again in 35 seconds and then we proceed to farm our own camps yet again. Going for the red and another thing about Nautilus is that when you play him in the jungle, you always want to max your third skill pretty low cooldown and deals a lot of damage when clearing camps. Second skill is also good in uh, increasing your damage output and giving you a bit of durability. Finally, Xin Zhao gets a gank topside and I'm not in position to go for any counter gank. So we just go back by Aroa so we can start stacking this item. Karma gets engaged but we're already here. If she's able to buy a bit more time then we definitely can kill their jungle especially since he already used his flash earlier. So here I use my first skill for a gap closer. If it hits the terrain, I get reduced cooldown. And I'm looking for the Xin Zhao instead of the Jax. He's able to dodge my ultimate because of his own ulti. And he lives with 1 HP. So good for him that we're not able to punish him as much. And this is an advantage for the opponent because their Kale gets to scale freely. Knowing that Xin Zhao has no more HP, we go for the invade. Luckily, his Krugs are up and we continue to steal his camps. 
We can also go for a gank mid, but I just wanna take this for free. It's much more safer, and Kale has flash and ult, so she might just escape. And Xin Zhao randomly goes back. He thought that there's a camp, and we go for the immediate punish. Look how strong my damage is. We just burst him right there, and perfect lining. The objective just spawned. This is gonna be a free herald for us without them getting any dragon priority. With their jungle down, we can definitely take this for ourselves and then go for a possible reset, or we can just go straight for the dragon since we have full HP. We went for the safer play with the recall, getting a bit of our mana back, plus buying some items. We don't have to be in a rush because my team is doing a good job zoning away the opponents as well. I think Nami flashed and ultied, so we go to the mid lane, try to zone the kill as soon as she runs away. We can just summon the Herald mid and then proceed to start the dragon. If ever they go for the contest, we definitely have the advantage here with so much damage. Q flash onto the Nila. I missed my auto attack, but it's fine. At least we force her flash, get her pretty low so she wouldn't be able to fight on the next uh, clash. 50-50 smite. I made a mistake here. I thought I had smite, but there's Sin Zhao choked also and he wasn't able to steal it. And in return, we get not only the dragon, but two free kills as well. Their Jax does a good job pushing our Baron lane. I don't know how Fiora started to lose the matchup even though we got an early gank. But it's fine as long as we get our Vayne Lulu ahead. Our scaling is also very good. The only thing I need to worry about is their Kale, who's been able to free farm all this while. But as soon as I see her items, she went for the AD variant which is pretty good for me since I don't have to build much magic resist. Their Kale got a lot of plates mid, but overall, we're able to secure one tower, dragon, and herald. The only thing that's going well for the opponents right now is that they're able to take down our top tower. Here, I'm just focusing to clear my camps, and as soon as I see an angle to gank, we go for the immediate engage. Nami goes down without a fight, and I'm trying to chase them down, but they're just too fast. It's fine. We're already able to get a kill, and this is gonna be a possible free tower. If someone would try to defend, I have my full combo to burst them down. Sinjao goes mid, tries to take down our Karma, and she's doing a good job of trying to live. Unfortunately, I think she falls down, but it's okay. We get another uh, 5 plates at the mid lane. We go back to base, immediately complete the Imperial Mandate. Really good synergy with Nautilus Kit, giving us more AP, HP, and Ionia Boots. Decre decreasing my cooldowns, and look at this damage. We force the kill ultimate with our two items, Roa plus Imperial Mandate. We're just dealing so much damage and being tanky at the same time. Their kill almost dealt no damage. And here, top side, you know what? All we need to do is to get this Vayne Lulu ahead, tank for them, and they should be popping off in the next team fights. Jax cancels his TP. This is an easy tower dive. Since we're quite tanky, Lulu does a good job tanking the tower as well, and yeah. We're just snowballing our lanes, but the opponents are doing a good job looking for trades at the bottom lane. Karma goes down, but based on what's happening on this game, our Vayne is playing really well, and we're also able to get a lot of gold. Fiora's chasing them down, we're in it for the long chase. I have my ultimate ready, even though Nanabi flashes, my ulti just chases her down, and she can't do anything about it. The Scuttler randomly blocks my hook, but it's fine. We go around, try to go for a flank. Unfortunately, our Vayne goes down. I don't know what our Fiora was doing, but we still have a lot of damage though. Look at that. We destroy the Nila, and with Sin Zhao K left, they deal zero damage against us. And another thing about Mandate is that it increases our damage, and we can easily proc this uh, item since we have so much crowd control. So if we have someone with us, then... We could basically burst them in one combo. Ionia Boots is up. Usually I'd go with the Armor Boots. But in this case, since they have a lot of mixed damage, Ionia Boots is a much safer choice. It allows me to spam my skills more. Since it decreases the cooldown of not only my skills, but my summoner spells as well. Here we go for a double clear. Look at our third skill dealing so much damage. Easy clear on the camps. And I think Nautilus is the only uh, Nautilus is the tank that can clear the fastest. 
So with our positioning, we look for and of course we force and engage Nila running away pretty fast. Unfortunately, she's able to run away, but we go for the Sinjao, just play front to back, even though Kale has her ultimate, we just go for someone else, look for the Nila, take her down, and yeah, just stay front, tank all of the damage, crowd control one target, my team focuses them down, and easy. You don't need to do much mechanics or not, the hardest thing that you need to do is possibly hook, or go for a Q flash like this. Immediately burst down the Kale, tank the tower a bit, and once she goes down, I miss my hook, but it's fine. We're already able to get the kill, and this is how easy it is to use this champion. Just hook someone, second skill, third skill, and they just die. They can't move a, a bit, and yeah, I hook randomly went to the Nami, but with Nila dealing a lot of damage, I don't have any HP left. 5 seconds till my ulti, and yeah, we just overextended a bit. Our backline just died and their whole team was there. Not the best trade, but at least the kill went to the Nami. So their ADC did not get any shutdown gold. Dragon is up and that's something I don't want to give. Fiora is freely pushing the top side. Karma does a good job poking, not allowing her to start the dragon. Waiting for my respawn timer and seeing that Xin Xiao is running towards the dragon. We buy TP since we're so ahead in the game. TP onto the Karma so we can help her. And I wanted to use my hook to try to kill Danila but no choice. As soon as I missed it, I have to use my ulti. She's able to buy enough time though for the Sin Zhao to secure the dragon, unfortunately. But it's fine. Use our hook for uh, engage. And we just take the blue buff instead. The easiest combo for Nautilus if you're having a hard time hitting your hook is to just ulti first. Once your ulti hits, follow up with the hook, auto attack, third skill. So you provide so much CC plus a slow right after. Your bread and butter combo, by the way, is your second skill. One trick about Nautilus second skill is that you always want to auto attack first before using your second skill. That way, you would have an attack animation cancel and you would be able to use a, essentially, a double attack. With all that's done, we go back to our camps and start clearing again. And the next item that we're building is just being more tanky. Since we already have a lot of damage, a lot of CC, we don't need to build any more damage with our teammates being all carries. If we have multiple tanks, maybe I can build more AP like Iceborne. But in this case, we don't have a frontline, so I'm the one building the tanky items and we went for the randoins here since they have a lot of AD plus people that can crit which randoins is perfect to play against. Kale went for the crit build plus their ADC so this is very good for us. This also gives us a bit more durability. Then the next item I'm going for is Thornmail since we wanna negate their auto attacks and get some anti heal Sinjao tries to 1v1 me, and look at that. I'm receiving zero damage, tanking four of them right now with the Randoin's Omen. Third skill ultimate, and yeah, we're just running it down. Q flash onto the Nami, securing the kill, and if you have a lot of items on Nautilus, look at the cooldown of my ultimate. I think it's only 25 seconds at level 3. That's why Ionian Boots is so good on this champion, since it allows you to spam this, this skill without much problem. With their jungle pretty low and they're just going for a split push, we easily take the Baron and do some damage check onto the Sinchao. We miss our hook but it's fine. I don't know why he randomly face checks and wants to 1v1 me, but look at my damage. Pure tank by the way. Sinchao dealing almost nothing. We just destroy him by auto attacks plus our second skill. We have our third skill for the last hit and yeah. That's why Nautilus has such a huge advantage over this matchup. Meanwhile, my teammates are able to take down the Nila and Kale, which is good because even though our late game is really strong, they also have quite a decent late game with the Kale. We have Baron buff, so I'm just tanking the tower. We could probably take down the mid and bot inhibitor since three of them are still in the graveyard. We take down the bot tower, Nami is the only one there, I see Jax on the top side and what I'm doing right now is just spamming my ulti, zoning them away since I'm gonna have it again in 20 seconds 
And this is how brain dead this champion is. You don't need much skill. Just press R if they're out of position. And here, we chase the, down the Jax who's running away. Long lane by the Fiora. Waiting for the Jax to jump. I have a lot of crowd control. Even though he's able to jump away plus flash. We have our ultimate to chase him down. Hook just in case. Vein secures the kill. And then we look for another fight. Since we still have our Baron buff. It's about to expire though, but it's fine. We'll just take the red instead and have buff sharing for the Fiora. Kill though is overextended mid, so I ping that I'm on the way. She's able to escape, but it's fine. We'll just go back, buy our items. Torn mill is now up, but a bit of a bad recall. The creeps are gonna cancel it. So we just position ourselves yet again before going for the recall. Instead of going for this though, blue is up, so I'm playing a bit greedy this game. Since we're super ahead. Even though they get the third dragon, it doesn't matter. But here, I don't know why they randomly went for an invade when the objective is up, but it's fine. We're super tanky. We flash into the Sinja, we just take her down even through the Kale ultimate. They're not able to buy enough time, and yeah. Even though our Fiora dies, we're still at full HP and still deal a lot of damage at the same time instead of going back to base i use my tp because i think someone is here so we can go for a possible steal nila though she's able to take it before i arrive but look at here 1v1 against the adc nila supposed to be a tank shredder but in this game we're the ones killing her she's doing a good job though putting me pretty low doing a lot of life steal with her kit lulu saves the day and that is why i need thornmail even though i deal a lot of damage she has lifesteal to sustain my DPS. After going back, Thornmail, perfect item against their lineup. Frozen Heart is another good alternative since they're all mostly auto-attack based. Usually, I'd go with a Visage third item, but knowing that they don't have much AP, we'll just go for the Warmog's last so that we would have regen out of combat as well as becoming even tankier. Usually the enchantment I'd go here is Stone Plate. Good synergy, especially with the Visage. And right now what we're doing is we're just starting the Baron as soon as it spawns. Our Baron take is pretty fast. We have good smite secure with third plus smite and kinda flip it. We take it in the end. Level 15. And with this Baron buff, two of their inhibitors are down. We're also able to get two kills, so we should be able to close out the game in the next few minutes. Hook the minion, look to see if Danila wants to fight me. But we don't know where they are. So, Kale is running around and yep, this is another 1v1. And this is me with Thornmail. Now Nila's not able to sustain. She even gets damaged because of the Thornmail passive. And yeah, this is so much different from the first team fight at the Dragon where she was almost able to kill me. With Danila going down, Lulu Vane just runs it down mid and they end the game. So yeah, pretty fun game, easy to use champion, deals so much damage, and is very tanky at the same time. 100% Nautilus at challenger tier. We even get MVP, 11, 1, and 13. Props to the Vayne Lulu for popping off as well. It's best to use Nautilus if you have a hard carry like this Vayne. 1.9k on Courage of the Colossus, 400 HP on Overgrowth, and that is it for our Nautilus jungle. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Ciao, ciao. Bye.